Hi, this is Dave. So, welcome to this ACCA paper P1 revision. So, the question we're going to focus upon is from your June 2011 question number three. So, you can find this question in your revision notes as well. So, let's have a look at the um, requirement then. So, part two discuss the ways in which charities may differ from the populist companies. Okay. And explain how these differences may affect their respective corporate uh, governance structures. So firstly, uh, they are different because for charities they are non-profit making organisations mainly. Uh, you know, they, 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 are, they, are, they are trying to assist in order to meet uh, his stated objective. But for the populistic companies of course their objective is to try to maximise the shareholders wealth. So from that perspective, the perspective we can talk about lots of things. So for populistic companies uh, especially in the UK, is to follow the UK Corporate Governance Code, and as a result of that, of course, the non-executive directors will try to oversee the executive directors. But for the charity over here, the executive directors assist in order to run the charity, but they are overseen by uh, not the non-executive directors, but rather they will be uh, overseen uh, by the board of trustees. Okay, so they are different. So this form the answer for the part A, and. To be honest with you, this part A has nothing to do with the you know actual scenario. Don't have to relate it back, relate it back to the scenario. So that's why we're going to start to answer out in the P1 exam for the part A. So firstly, the regulation will be different. Okay, so the publicity companies governed by the uh, corporate governance code, but charities governed by local charities regulations. The purpose of them: one is non-profit making, one is profit making. And the expectation will be different as well. So one cares about wealth and one cares about your objective. So for example, protection of the animals. The government structures, the public listed companies should follow the stock exchange rules and the non-second directors oversee the second directors in the public listed company, but the second directors will be overseen by the board of trustees in the charity. So, 9 marks, 9 points, that will be enough, okay, so we finish off the part A. Let's look at the part B then, define transparency, of course transparency, we've looked at that in a previous question, I hope you can remember, is the information should be disclosed to all of the stakeholders, so this is what I mean by transparency, it's one of the uh, very important uh, characteristics within the, uh, the, also the language as well, within the corporate governance. They construct the case for uh, you know, greater transparency in the governance of the uh, of the uh, non profit making organisation over here. It's to be eight months, so uh, which means we are going to have looked at the uh, you know construct the case for greater transparency, which is good for the organisation. So we're going to explain that why it's good. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at that when when we come to it. Okay, so. The simple idea behind it is that we're going to eliminate any of these agency problems and increase the confidence by shareholders as well. It's simply because, well, I disclose all of the information to you and so you can trust me. So no agency problem actually exists. And also, you can be confident of whatever uh, you know, decision I'm going to make as well, since you know me really well. So part C, audit committees can have a role in reviewing the internal systems and they suggesting areas of deficiency required to explain how the audit committee might help in addressing the apparent internal control deficiencies at the organisation over here. So from that perspective then of course uh, how the audit committee can make help to reduce the weaknesses within the internal systems of course uh, because one of their roles will be trying to you know uh, you know trying to uh, uh, oversee the internal system so Setting up the audit committee, of course, this will decrease okay, the internal systems weaknesses over here and also decrease the fraud happens within the company as well. So we're going to talk about that in the exam later when we come to it. So let's have a look at the uh, scenario then. Okay, let's have a look at the scenario then. In a country of London, eight organisations registered as, as charities are not subject to the same financial reporting requirements as the legacy companies. So you can see here, so their rules, they, the rules they have to follow are different. So this can form an answer into a previous study. And one person to take advantage of this is 
is the uh, Horek Hoy, who has uh, led his rigorous campaign in favor of animal protection for the past 25 years as a highly competent self-published uh, published for his charity and uh, engaging media performer has, has raised the public profile his charity substantially. He can and uh, does raise large amounts of money for his charity through uh, his personal charm and passionate appearance on the television, that kind of thing. And his charity is called HHO and state today is to stop animal suffering. So from that perspective of course we can see here Probably the companies they're going to maximize this role for the shareholders, but for the charity over here, they're going to stop animals suffering. So one is maximize the wealth, one is to fulfill his stated goal. So this will be different. This will be the difference from between the uh, populistic companies and uh, the charity over here. And comment that, comment on that in the exam. Next paragraph. Mr. Hoy has recently become the subject of criticism by the media because of a uh, allegations that he lived in a, in a very luxury lifestyle and personally owned a large mansion of number of classic cars. So in that perspective, of course, for the charity, it's quite sensitive for this because you're a charity, I give you money, but I can see that one of the second directors over here is owning a lot of things, a lot of assets such as the expensive cars. As a result of that, I may deem that this charity is not acting is not using my money to protect animals, but rather you're using my money to buy the cars for you. And hence, I'm not going to give you money anymore. So, in order to help solve this problem, we need to increase the transparency. By increasing the transparency, this can give my give the share, uh, give the donators confidence that I'm going to donate the money to you. It's simply because by doing so, of course, you're going to use my money into protecting animals rather than fulfilling your personal interests. So this will be the answer. You can write it down in the exam for the part two. The WHO recently bought a private jet to support the Mr. Hoyle in his travels around the world for speaking engagements and for his work for the WHO charity. One journalist reported that most of his donors to WHO are well-meaning individuals many of the modest means uh, that care greatly about the animal suffering and who would be horrified if they knew of the luxury in which Mr. Hoyle lived, okay, so relating to part B. Next problem. Despite the fact that Mr. Hoyle has claimed that the, he personally takes only a modest salary from the organisation for his work, a journalist recently estimated that the, this person's personal wealth thought to be gained from the WHO to be around $10 million. When challenged to disclose the financial details of the WHO and Mr. Hoyle's own personal earnings, the WHO spokesman simply replied that this was not required by the law. Okay, so from that perspective, we can see here the information is not transparent at all. You may try to say, well, this is not good, is it? So because uh, you earn a lot of money, maybe the money comes from the donations. It's not good. Okay. The WHO has refused to join a group of other charities that have undertaken to make full financial disclosures despite it's not being mandatory in law. So being transparency, of course, being transparent, of course, we can make, you know, disclose the useful information to the uh, donators rather than just to say uh, it is not governed by the local law, etc. So, uh, uh, you know, in order for a business to run successfully, of course, uh, by trying to be transparent, it's very important to increase their confidence. But WHO says that although it does produce the financial information for charity and tax authorities, there's no intention of making this information public. It also makes no disclosure about the corporate governance structures and was criticised as being intentionally in order to you know, hide the bad practices. So, yeah, so undermine the confidence by the shareholder as a result. In unity to media pressure to provide some of the information to his financial affairs, WHO immediately published a pie chat on his website saying that it's an expenditure with dividing between animal shelters, field work helping animals 
administration and other courses. This was, uh, you know, totally you know, public financial disclosure. So is that useful to the to the user? Well, the answer is no, because you can see here, you got, for example, ten dollars here. Fifty percent split into this. Thirty percent split into this. Six percent split into this. Ah, the final five percent split to all the courses. So what do we mean by all the courses? You need to specify that. There's no point that you're going to say I'm going to spend this in the other areas, but maybe the money has been spent into buying a lot of land and also cars for himself. So from that perspective, of course, it's not is not useful at all. So increase the transparency is good, okay, in the part B. And also in the part C, uh, we, we have an audit committee, for example. Of course, they can ensure that this particular information will be disclosed properly and also useful information will be disclosed to the user as well, rather than just the split between costs over here. So this will form the answer for the part B and C. So let's look at the answers together. So for part B for the transparency, give a definition of that, okay, and construct a case of the transparency. Of course, it's important, eliminate agency problem and give a little bit of example to examiner in relation to the case and confidence, increase the confidence, uh, you know, trying to give a little bit of example to examiner to, you know, make the financial information more useful, okay, uh, trying to give it the exam to exam as well. So this will form the answer for the part B. Okay, we'll let you that you can look at that in the notes on your own. And for part C, how the audit committee may help. So audit committee oversee the internal to systems of a company done by reviewing the existing systems to find out any weaknesses. So in the company, lots of expenses which is not which are not justifiable. So the audit committee needs to investigate into this. Also, the audit committee should reveal whether there is a fraud happening as well. Also, it can set up a whistleblowing channel, which means if somebody has found a fraud happening, instead of reporting to the head of the, of the company, they can go to the audit committee, report to the audit committee, and then it's up to the audit committee to find out what's going on. Also, the audit committee should review the risks happening within the company. So for example, if you're not going to comply with the corporate governance, of course you end up suffering a penalty maybe. So we need to ensure that this, this does not happen because the internal to systems exist in order to reduce the business risks, i.e. the risks that the company has to spend the money out. And hence, by trying to you know identify and you know identify and address those uh, you know risks that the company is facing, of course, it's good for the company not uh, paying the penalty out. Uh, furthermore, also, audit committee can review the financial information to ensure that the financial information uh, or useful financial information is disclosed to those users. So, these are the answer for the part A, part B, and part C. And we finish off the question on June 2011, question number three.